Let's go. Hello. Let me just get a little more comfortable. Don't mind me in my sports bra and gym wear. This is apparently what I live in now. <laughs> so, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. So I kind of thought that it's been a while since we had a little little heart to heart, a little catch up. So I know that like I do these videos every so often, but it's been a while since I filmed a and a video. As per usual, I popped some questions on my Instagram story and you guys have been asking away. And I have picked 10 questions, which I plan on answering in quite detail. So strap in, grab a snack, grab a drink. I'm on my water. Oh, I know. <laughs> it just splashed me. Great. So grab whatever you need to, get comfortable. Let's, let's chat and let's have a catch up. Where did I put these questions? What a great start. Here we go. Actually, is there 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I lied. There's nine questions. That I want to answer. <laughs> so let's, what should we start with? I feel like there's no like soft or hard questions. They're all quite like interesting questions. So let's start with, could you see yourself moving from where you live now? So this question, I do actually get asked a few times, um, or I have been asked a few times in the past. And this, the short answer is yes, I do see myself moving. However, the long answer, which we will dive into, <laughs> is this house, as much as I love it, was never meant to be my forever home. It was very much a getting on the property ladder, start a home, just, yeah. And I bought it in 2018. I've been here for five years, <laughs> coming up to six, actually, yeah, is it six years? No, five years. What year are we in? 2018, but in January 2018, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, yeah, five years. Maths, Jess, come on. Yeah, so I bought it in 2018. It's a one bedroomed house. It is very small. It is very, very small, which means that I, I mean, if you haven't seen my vlogs before or if you're kind, kind of new, you might not know like the layout of my house, but essentially you walk in, there's the living room and then behind it is the kitchen. The stairs go upstairs, obviously. <laughs> and then you've got the landing, bathroom and my bedroom here. That is it. I mean, I've got a garden as well, but in terms of space, it is on the smaller side, which to be fair, I feel like having looked at other properties and things, I mean, I'm not planning on like moving straight away or anything like that, but I, I know for a fact that I will have to move at some point and looking at the properties that are currently for sale at the minute, there's not really much you can get for your money. So it's not something that I'm looking to do in the near present. Um, but it is definitely something that I will have to consider coming down, like going down the line. So could I see myself moving from where I live now? Yes. But in terms of, I'm not sure if that means like house or whether it means like location in terms of cities and things. If it does mean in terms of cities, I think I will probably stay in Newcastle for a long time. The only other place I would ever consider moving is Manchester. But again, that's not like a, it's just not something that I see myself doing in the next like five to 10 years. But um, Newcastle, I feel like you've got everything here. You've got, you've got the quiet suburban areas, the city centre. Like you've got a good nightlife, you've got beaches, and you've also got things like the Lake District and Scotland within a couple of hours drive. So you've got great countryside, even in Northumberland. So like, I feel like everything is here. I almost feel like Newcastle is very underrated because I think the bigger cities like London and Manchester get like all this hype and stuff, but they don't have everything that Newcastle does. Do Am I lying there? Do they have, well, what I mean by that is like, it literally takes me about 20 minutes to get to a beach if I wanted to or you know if everything for me because I drive is within half an hour and um, which I think for other major cities like you have to go a bit further yeah I don't know I just like it in Newcastle I always have and I think I always will but it's not to say that I would never move somewhere else I just don't see it at the minute next question are you going to solo holiday this year <laughs> the amount of questions I've got in my inbox in my YouTube comments everywhere about going on solo holidays. So obviously last year I went solo traveling a lot. I went on solo holidays. Um, I went to Ibiza, I went to Paris. Um, where else did I go? Tenerife. I did a lot of solo holidaying last year and I kind of feel that as disappointing as I feel like people might find this, I'm not in that era anymore. I have met someone. <laughs> Um, I do have a boyfriend and I want to start making memories with him. So solo travel is just not something that I'm really interested in anymore. I feel like I've done it. Do you know what I mean? Which I know some people will be 
maybe a bit disappointed at because I do enjoy kind of filming my solo holidays and I did enjoy going on solo holidays but I also am really looking forward to going on holiday with my boyfriend so I kind of feel like last year was my solo trip like was my solo holiday year and going forward it's going to be creating memories and going on holiday with my boyfriend so I hope that that is all right with everyone not that you've got much choice because I know what I'm I know what I'm doing but yeah so solo holidays aren't really something that I'm going to be doing this year I've, I've done it and that's kind of yeah that's it okay do you see kids and marriage in your future love from Shauna in New Zealand hello Shauna in New Zealand I can't but it's so mad to me that people are all the way in New Zealand and say little old me do I see kids and marriage in the future? yes I always have from from being a child myself I think when I was growing up when somebody I, I went through like a phase of when people ask me want to, what I want to be when I grow up I said I wanted to be a bride whether I knew what that entailed at the time I'm not entirely sure but marriage and kids has always been something that I've seen for me in my life it's just one of them goals that I've always had I wanted to meet someone uh, get married have babies maybe two or three we'll see what happens if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't um, but yes I am hoping for marriage and kids in my life the next one what foundation would you recommend for oily skin please so I don't have it sounds weird but I do have a little bit of oily skin and um, my skin fluctuates depending on the weather so literally I go through spells where my skin is so dry and then other times I have times where my skin is dead oily so I have a couple of recommendations based on things that I've used and things that like have worked for me but it might not it might not be what you think so let me just grab them out my uh out my makeup bag okay so my most go-to makeup is hang on it's not just a foundation it's a trio so this is my favourite foundation ever, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin, and this is in shade 5 Neutral. Now, I know what you're going to say, girl, that's not for oily skin, but I do have quite oily skin at the minute, and I still use this, but it gives me a lovely, flawless, like, glowy look without looking too oily, because I then top it with one of these, oh, what are they called again? Tr I've completely forgotten the company name. I'll pop it on screen once I've researched it, but, oh, Trigwell, that's it. Trigwell puff pads, which this needs a little clean. Let's just ignore that. Um, a Trigwell little puff pad and then some loose powder. So this is the Revolution Banana Powder. Uh, this is my holy grail. It's lasted me so long. I've literally been using this for like months and months. And can you see how much I still have left? Brilliant. So basically when I've put my foundation on, I'm like, girl, you're, you're looking oily but using this I'll literally get some of the loose powder onto here and then I'll like pat it in my air in the areas on my face which I get most oily which for me are my forehead my chin my upper lip and then kind of like up here basically everywhere essentially um and this like lasts really really well that is the first recommendation for my like everyday and then the second recommendation that I've got is something that was recommended to me from TikTok I think I don't know I've seen loads of people use it and when I went to go and get color matched the girl was like yes this is great for oily skin because it's a really like matte foundation so this is the uh, Huda Beauty what's it called I keep forgetting what it's called Huda Beauty faux filter luminous matte um, and this is in the shade vanilla I'm, I'm this is usually when I'm very pale so it's a very light shade on me but this is what it looks like and when I tell you, you literally need about a smidgen of it to cover your entire face and it will be matte, that, that yeah, I'm, I'm not lying. Um, but I would still probably powder over, the, over this anyway because that's just kind of part of my routine. Um, using the same powder. But that is my recommendations for foundations. Obviously everybody's different and everyone's skin's different and things like that so what works for me might not work for someone else so if it doesn't work I'm really sorry don't come at me but um that is what I use on a day-to-day -day basis Billy's come to keep me company okay next one oh speak of the devil how is Billy love seeing you doing everything to help him can't wait to see the cat your oh so Billy is doing really well he's a little bit pissed off that he's now back to being an indoor cat whilst the cat yours being built he was a little terror and tried to escape from the garden and was fighting other cats and this that and the other a couple of comments on that video had queried whether he'd been done he has been neutered and um, it was neutered at like 
I can't even tell you, the right age, whatever that was. So he has been neutered by the vet and I think he was just that used to being an indoor cat that as soon as he came across something that he's never come across, which is another cat. Although having said that, him and my sister's cat, Max, get on all right. Some, they do and they don't. But like, having said that, when they meet each other, it's in a neutral territory because we both take them to my parents' house. I didn't actually last year, but the times that they've met, both me and my sister have taken them to my parents' house, which is like neutral territory, like nobody owns the territory. So they've kind of like got on in that sense. But I think having other cats and things like invade on his territory, which was the garden, like he just didn't like at all. So yeah, we're hoping that the catio brings him joy and he's happy with it. Um, the only thing I'm slightly worried about is that he's obviously experienced going a little bit further, even in just the garden. So whether he'll long to be out of the catio and in the garden, I don't know. But we'll just have to see how it goes. If it doesn't work, it's gonna be a blooming expensive mistake, but yeah. Well, fingers crossed, please pray for me <laughs> that this is gonna work. Um, but yeah, otherwise he's doing very well. I, I started him on a food called Catkin, which he likes it, he does like it. And oh, the start, right, so the first box was like 24 pounds for like a month's worth of pouches. And I was like, this is great. This is like fairly similar to what I was like paying for him to be raw fed. So I was like, there's not much difference. What I didn't actually realize, and this is completely my fault for not reading like the terms and conditions properly, that that is like the trial box price. And the last two months that he's been getting his new boxes and I've been trialing with different recipes and things, they've been charging 63 pounds for a box of food, which will last one month or 28 days, should I say, it's not even a full month. Um, so unfortunately that is kind of out of my budget at the minute. I'm sorry, Billy, but he's gonna have to go on to something a little bit more cheaper and less expensive just, and yeah, any recommendations for, for him and what you, what you guys feed him if you do have a Bengal. Just something kind of mid mid range, not too expensive, but is also kind of good for them. He does like, he absolutely loves like food and jelly, but when it comes to like the cheap stuff like Whiskers and Felix, the, he throws them up. He loves them, like will literally gobble them so quickly, but then he will always throw it up. So he was taken off that very quickly when he was like younger. But yeah, any recommendations for cat food? I like, I really appreciated the um, recommendation for Catkin, but I didn't read the terms and conditions properly and I didn't realise quite how expensive it was. So he is gonna have to change, but otherwise he's doing all right. He's doing fine, still clinging on, still always around, still has to be where we are. <laughs> Next question. Would you like to do a meet and greet sometime? Would love to meet you. Oh, do you know what? I keep, I keep thinking about this and I, I would love to do a meet and greet. I would absolutely love to do, but not even like a formal like style meet and greet kind of thing. I would love to do just like a, almost like a group picnic or something over the summer. But like, I'm just like a little, I don't know. I'm not sure, like, maybe this is just me being like a little self-critical, but I don't know that many people, like I would be worried that people wouldn't show up. <laughs> and that I'd just be sat there on my own. Like, I don't know, but I, let me know if, if you're in the Newcastle area or whatever and you would like something to be arranged. Even with me and Demi, sometimes me and Demi have talked about doing something but we just never got round to it. But yeah, it would have to be something that was kind of like a bit chilled, not like sometimes I see influencers and stuff, more like old school like influencers and YouTubers like, um, like Zoella and things did the proper like conventions where they like had, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't do anything like that. But just like a chilled like, picnic in the park style thing. Would you be interested? I don't know. Well, let me know. Let me know. So this one, I screenshotted this one. I actually lit physically gasped when I read this, right? And I'm going to need your help with this as well, because I'm not 100% sure how to answer this, right? What would you do if your mate has been catfishing men for eight years? I mean, a hundred men. I, I honestly, I don't know. I'm, it's not funny. It isn't. But it is making me laugh a little bit because I just don't know what I would do. Like, I literally have no clue what I would do in that situation. Maybe have an intervention? Like, do you, like, how do you feel about it? Do you agree? No, well, not agree, but are you, like, a little bit more relaxed about what she's doing? Or are you, like, no way she shouldn't be doing that? Like, in my personal opinion, I don't really agree with catfishing. I think it's an incredibly cruel thing to do so, to someone, but I just how would it's obviously something that's become a little bit of an addiction for them because to me I don't think that's something that people just do as a 
like willy nilly one day thing like cap like it's been going on for eight years with a hundred men I, th I think it's some kind of addiction and I, th I think that maybe he's have a sit down with him maybe he's express your feelings towards it um how you think it might affect your relationship with her or I don't know I'm assuming it's a her it might might be a man I don't know um I haven't specified have you no um but yeah just maybe tell them how it makes you feel and how like and that you would I don't know let me know in the comments if you're seeing this and and you know exactly what you would do write it in the comments and then whoever's written that have a look through the comments and hopefully you'll get some better advice than what I've just given you but that is kind of how I would go about it maybe just sit down and have a talk with them and just be like look you know I think you need to stop this um, it's getting a bit carried away like you don't know whose people like whose feelings you're hurting and I don't know yeah that's what I would probably do the next question what's your TV recommendations so I have been watching Grey's Anatomy, Grey's Anatomy again <laughs> for like the fourth time and um, so that is my absolute favorite ride or die I could watch that over and over I could literally finish the series and then go back to season one and just continuously watch it um, so Grey's Anatomy 100% it's on um, Disney Plus and Amazon I think Amazon Prime and um, also I've just started watching Lost again so that's on Disney Plus recommend that what are my go-to's Grey's Anatomy Lost Desperate Housewives again that's on I think Disney Plus or Amazon I can't remember which one um, Desperate Housewives is a good one what else have I been really enjoying do you know what I really love like the BBC dramas so like Happy Valley if you haven't seen Happy Valley on on BBC iPlayer go and check it out that is one of the best series like the best BBC dramas that I've seen what was the other one there was a really hard-hitting one which was called oh god was it called Liar no I'm gonna have to google this it's gonna bug me unbelievable that's it unbelievable where can you watch it Netflix so unbelievable is probably one of the series that like I watched and I and I, I felt like really bad for the character even though I obviously like it's mad how we get like immersed in these things as if the characters are real and things but the top the topic that it's about and what they touch on is incredibly like hard hitting I just think it's it's something that everybody should watch and to try and understand like why things happen the way they happen and why maybe sometimes people don't come forward with things and then when they do they then retract them because they don't think anyone's going to believe them that kind of thing but yeah unbelievable is a unbelievable series <laughs> it's great it is great so I recommend that right last question what are your plans for after the 75 day soft loving the content so far thank you very much so funnily enough right the 75 day soft challenge is something that I came across and thought this would be a great chance to like change my lifestyle and to how can I word it what did I word it in the first um episode it was to improve my quality of life so that was how I was always viewing the 75 soft challenge and once the 75 days are over yes I'm kind of like counting down the days and stuff at the moment but I am planning on trying to carry it on afterwards not as like a challenge or anything like that but just to hopefully in these 75 days that I'm doing the challenge for like to have picked up habits which will last me a lifetime so that's kind of what my aim with it is and then essentially even though I'm not calling it a challenge after the 75 days are, are up I do plan on just carrying on because hopefully by then I will have formed good habits and good relationships with like meals and food and just yeah I don't know we'll see what happens but I don't plan on stopping like as soon as the 75 days are, are up I'm not planning on just going back to normal and whatever I was doing because that's not really the point of it for me the point of it for me was to try and change my habits for a lifetime for me to then finish the 75 days and then just go back to what I was doing before that to me is just another like yo-yo diet <laughs> so I'm not seeing it as that and yeah I will be carrying it on would you like me to still film it though that's the thing because it wouldn't be technically a challenge but would you like me to still do like a almost like a weekly what ain't in a day slash fitness like what I'm doing fitness wise and stuff like that is that something that you would want like in a longer vlog on a Sunday or I don't know let me know in the comments so that is all the questions that I 
have picked to answer today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope we've had a nice little chat together and that you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, go hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Baby, let me love you, let me love you, let me love you.